Welcome to Amsterdam, sir. Ah, thank you. It's good to be here. Such a clean city, isn't it? <laughs> That's what we were saying, I guess. Um, every time I've been here, it seems just, I don't know, I like, I like the vibe of this city. I really do. I've done, I've, I have actually done paddle boating down the canals. No yeah, I swear it. Me and my wife, it was amazing. You know, you know how life-threatening that is, right? No, is it? Is it? And the boats are just cruising by so fast. I mean, the big oh, yeah. one. There, yeah, there were there were times that we um, we had to we had to backpedal a little bit. <laughs> hey, talking about the album because you have little time left. Uh, tell me, I'm pretty amazing for the album. Uh, was it hard for you guys to actually make and record this one? Um, this one was actually for me a lot easier than Melophobia. I think Melophobia we were going through a time where we kind of had to get over the hump per se, I guess, and. Um, this record for me kind of just flowed off the back of Melophobia and really it was fun to make for me and, and it was a different experience for Melophobia it was almost a personal hell <laughs> oh yeah Melophobia we were just going through a lot of stuff with our band as far as just kind of inner ba yeah, yeah inner band turmoil kind of stuff and then we um, and also we were pushing ourselves to grow um, we we're pushing ourselves to just the extremes. And pushing yourself to grow, and, and, and it makes me think, grow as what? As songsmiths, as life entertainers? Because, I mean, you guys wrote killer tunes on your first album. You have a life killer rap. Uh, your, your album art was always great. So how, how could you possibly improve? Well, I, I think that's what we learned on Melophobia. I think you constantly are going to change and, and improve and... Um, and grow naturally and I think on Melophobia when we first started we were pushing for that and so we you know for me it was it became a little unnatural and uh, then we you know pulled it together and really we grew from that situation um, you can definitely say you guys did because killer album uh, one of the songs that stood out was actually the last song Portuguese Knife Fight I know you wrote it of course, I delved into it. I mean, a Portuguese knife fight is bound to be legal, uh, lethal because the <laughs> knives are so fucking long. Uh, the text is also, uh, well, a, a killer lover theme, which, which runs through the whole album, by the way, as I think. Um, what a great song, man. Oh, uh, yeah. When, when I first started writing that song, I was really influenced. Well, I went back to a lot of stuff that I'd listened to earlier in our career. Um, as far as like Iggy Pop, MC5, mm -hmm. uh, the Stooges, yeah, all, you know. Um, it's a tribute to kick out the jam in many yeah, ways, yeah, right? Yeah. To totally, totally. It's it's definitely um, in that vein for sure. I love that album. Thank you. <laughs> and and, and uh, talking about the theme of the album, uh, a killer lover theme. I mean, um, it runs through the whole album. Love is a big theme. Is it something that grew from experience or is it something that you think is a great theme on a rock and roll record uh I so think basically is it based on a real style of real stories yeah I'm, i mean f i can only speak so much for the lyrics because i don't write any of them <laughs> but uh, yes yes i uh, matt they, it, matt was writing from personal experience yes so it makes me wonder i mean the people who, who he writes about they probably realize right that the songs are about them um, I don't know. Maybe uh, actually, "Hey True," um, that song was written about a kid that Matt met on a plane, and he was going through some troubles in his life. Matt and him connected and talked on the plane, and uh, Matt wrote the song about him. And then just the guy just recently reached out to Matt on Instagram, yeah, yeah, and uh, was really happy about it. Wow, what a great story. Hey, uh, there's a lot of uh, cool production, of course. Uh, Dan Auerbach did the production. Uh, too late to say goodbye. I was listening to that song again and again, and there's this rattle in the background. And I was like, is this my computer playing up or what's happening? But it's a hi-hat probably, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to m minimize on, a l as far as the production, we wanted to strip back a lot of things so the songs had a better voice themselves. Um... And uh, Too Late to get Say Goodbye we, was a song that was, I, I would say, considerably more cluttered than the recording. We really stripped back a lot of um, even the way we were 
strumming. We were just really minimalized that. And um, I think, I don't know what the rattle would be. Maybe like, a t- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just part of what, something that was happening in the room at that time because we were all playing the track at the same time. So um, it reminded me a little of like back in the days if you put on a CD, forgot about it, in the background you would hear like, yeah. You know? Oh, oh, you're talking about that's the um, okay. So we did we did like um, that's the hi hat that we reversed. We reversed. You reversed yeah, 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 yeah. We reversed the hi hat. Who came up with that idea? That's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just uh, I guess we were all kind of free flowing off the top of our head with ideas, and um, so we kind of layered that on top of the um, the sixteenth kind of hi hat thing and. And it's uh-huh. such a, it's a, I think it, it makes that song extra special because it is like, it's a slow song, it's a beautiful song, and to have like these production things in there is what I think makes music great. Uh, that's what we call swag. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got plenty of that. <laughs> hey, talking about swag, I saw you guys played, you opened for, for Metallica, for Christ's sake? Yeah, that, oh, um, yeah, you know, of, of course we were excited beyond even you know speakable words <laughs> but um we uh then the nervousness kick, kicked in <laughs> so <laughs> i mean you know you know like metallica they're one of the most legendary bands out there so um you never know how you know their fans are so diehard too so you never know how you're going to be received but honestly i felt like we made a good connection with a lot of the crowd uh, I, I was thinking about that bill and i mean uh, first I thought it was crazy, then I thought like, well, you know, I like both bands, so why not? And then you guys, of course, have a killer live rap. Well, I mean, uh, I think people uh, recognize the passion, and I think if, if if our bands carry a commonality, it's the passion that we put into our music, and I think once they saw that, they could connect with something, you know, connect with our band. But how did that bill come together? How did you get, get invited to play with them? Um... I honestly don't know if they check if I think that I think um, they do check. The, you know yeah I mean we're on the same management together but I think they we, we had played we had played their um, their festival that they put together uh, and Kirk actually came out and an- announced our band because they all got to announce their favorite band of the festival and so um, Kirk um, announced our band at their festival so um you know, maybe they chose us to play the show or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome story. Hey, uh, the first video, of course, from Mess Around, uh, you, you guys chose uh, ancient images, I can say, safely, by uh, Georges Méliès. He's from uh, from France, of course. He was like the first guy to really experiment with theater and color in, uh, in movies. Uh, it, it works really weird together, I think, the, the new music and the coloring and all th- really make me look again at how film production actually is made. Yeah, I mean, we, we've always been very concerned with the visual aids, and um, and I think that there, the visual aspect is very important to music because I think people can find a connection through the visual thi- the visual part with, with visuals being put to music. Uh, and we were just really kind of into his films and... Uh, and we, we'd always just wanted to make a, a really uh, low budget, cheap kind of like uh, where it wasn't, you know, spending all this money on on something. I think it can translate uh, it, any kind of great medium will translate together. Why him? Why choose a guy who filmed 100 years ago? I, he just made great, cool stuff. Uh and, and um, the the two movies that we were into, um, we kind of we we there was just a lot of stuff in there that would work with the film on uh, with the with the music. Honestly, I overheard your brother saying that you guys are working on a new video right now as we speak. Actually, what's it going to be like? Uh, it's going to be for the song. Uh, well, we're working on two right now. Um, we're we're doing a like a kind of almost like a hard day's night version of uh, cry our song cry baby so we're just going around all all of europe and filming kind of like the behind the scenes kind of stuff we're 
going and and for the first time in a long time we've actually got to do a lot of touristy things because <laughs> you know usually you show up to a venue you you know, take a shower you do sound check and and all that stuff but we've we've been able to get out and like explore the cities and uh it's been really cool so we're doing that for crybaby and then uh we're gonna do a video uh, when we get back in the states uh, for the for the song Trouble. What's it gonna be like? That's Matt's little masterpiece. It's his baby. So <laughs> he's yeah yeah. I, I it was it would be I I, I would get it all wrong <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Actually, I like uh, Cry Baby. Uh, I, I love the text. I think it's really cool. Uh, open your eyes, or life will pass you by. Um, I think it's. Uh, for me, it's the obvious thing to know and do. Uh, on the other hand, of course, most people don't live like that. Well, I mean, we all live through social media nowadays. So it's it can connect you to a lot of people. But sadly, um, you kind of watch life through a computer, which is not really living life. And uh, I think that song kind of touches on that kind of theme. A lot of uh, Instagram and uh, and computer and internet on uh, yeah, on the album as well. Everybody's curating their life to be this great experience when you know life has its ups and downs, and the downs make the ups even better, you know. And so uh, I don't know. It's a, it's 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 dangerous territory when you lose connect, physical connection with people. You definitely didn't lose physical connection. I mean, you just said you had. To, you, you, previous album was a turbulent time for you guys um how, how turbulent was it actually what did you guys ever think of like we need a break or let's quit this or fuck it um, i'm out of here I, I don't think that's ever been an option for our you know for the way we think i don't know music is part of life for us we me and matt grew our dad was a songwriter and so we grew up around that our whole life daniel titchener's dad was a songwriter Jared's dad was a drummer, and so, you know, Jared grew up around the drums all of his life, and so it's just be, it's the norm to us, you know? Um, so I don't, I don't think we ever really thought about any kind of quitting or anything like that. I think it was more of just growing pains. Um, so did you guys grow up now? Yeah, we're, we're always still growing. <laughs> I think you realize that finally, that... <laughs> You're growing until you finally die. <laughs>